<laughs> Excellent. Um, our next presentation, let's see, um, have Winfred Nock, and he's going to be discussing real-time content for 3D volumetric displays. The, the, I always love these kinds of um, working environments. I find them so engaging. Something about a volumetric environment just like sucks you in and makes you feel like a little kid, like almost the first time you saw a moving light move across a dance floor. I just wanted to stand in it or move in it. So I love these kinds of projects. Uh, let's bring Winfred in. Yep. yep. Hey, Chris, can we bring Winfred in? There he is. Yeah. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. I love to uh, listen uh, to Sahar as well, you know, because uh, although we work in uh, uh, the same program, Touch Designer, we have su such a different approach to things. So really cool. Really cool. Yeah, very cool. It, that, that's a really great point. We are going into um, some more touch designer discussion used in a completely different way. So yeah. uh, we'll leave it with you, Winfred. Thank you very much. Uh, then, hello everybody. My name is Winfred. Uh, I work for a German company called Setters and Fi. Uh, we have offices uh, uh, all over the world, uh, including uh, three in America. So before COVID, I traveled a lot. I'm a technical designer for uh, for Sedis. Uh, I only do video. And uh, in that position, I met a, a product a couple of years ago. Uh, we had a demo in our warehouse, uh, and that was uh, about a 3D volumetric display. I'm not sure if everybody is already seeing uh, my presentation, but I want to start off with a video.
Well, the video that you just saw was not uh, the first demo that I saw in the warehouse. Uh, that was during uh, an ADE, uh, Amsterdam Dance event, where it was much more simple, just a woman inside uh, at that volumetric display. This was during pro light and sound and everything you saw uh, regarding content was pre-rendered, of course. And uh, that was uh, what triggered me uh, during our uh, demo in the warehouse in Hilversum. Every customer that came in said, yeah, can we produce real time content for this display, you know, and at that time it was not possible. Uh, uh, it was pre rendered content uh, uh, playing from Resolume and uh, yeah, that triggered me uh, and I said, yeah, you know, it should be possible. Why not? Uh, computers are so powerful nowadays. Uh, we have uh, really nice programs. I was doing something in another uh, node based programming at that time, uh, which is called Fujio. Fujio was um, made by an English artist, Alex May, and uh, uh, he made it for his own artworks and um, made it open source uh, for everybody. And uh, the best part of his program is that it's cross-platform. So it not only runs on Apple or Windows, but it also runs on Linux. So you can run it on, let's say, Raspberry Pi, which is really awesome. Uh, the only thing uh, during that time, uh, video playback was not that great. So I was looking for a different solution and uh, found out that every major production at that time in the world uh, was running on Touch Designer. Uh, the, the guys from Russia, Sheila Sweta, who are doing amazing things for, uh, let's say, BMW or, or, or other brands. Uh, was really inspiring and that draw me into Touch Designer. And like Sahar said, the, the community is uh, one of the biggest uh, benefits of, of Touch Designer because whenever you have a question, no matter what time, you will get an answer if you post it on a forum within half an hour. Uh, uh, depending on the time frame, it will come either from America or from Japan or uh, guys from Italy. So the community is so tight. It's it's amazing. Um, I started out as a first uh, experiment, just uh, putting a sphere inside the uh, volumetric display. Uh, the display has uh, uh, dimensions of three by three by two meters. So it's pretty big. It's 18 cubic meters. Uh, it consists of uh, strings with LEDs. Uh, for this display, it's uh, 144K uh, LEDs. Um, but there are some things um, that uh, why this, this type of display is different than uh, other things that you might have seen already from uh, other uh, companies uh, because they have uh, a couple of patterns. Uh, which I want to talk about. Uh, so this was my first uh, experiment. And um, if you now go uh, to the, the website of the manufacturer, who is LedPulse, by the way, uh, you can see already uh, that the, the, the visual you have here is much more dense uh, in, in resolution. And so that is also one of the questions that everybody has, uh, uh, can we hire the resolution of, uh, of this display? Uh, yes, uh, technically it should be possible. Um, there are some things why you don't want to do it at this moment. Uh, if you, uh, let's say, use more strings, uh, you will lose transparency. So that's not an option. Uh, there is an option to um, increase the amount of LEDs uh, in the vertical plane, uh, so giving a, a higher resolution. Um, uh, and of course, <laughs> there's a cost aspect to it. Uh, and, and nowadays, uh, you could say, OK, uh, this display goes for uh, $1 per LED or per voxel. So you can do the math uh, on how expensive it already is. but. It's amazing. Uh, one of the uh, patterns they have and, and why it's uh, so transparent is because they use a system where all the LEDs are connected only by two wires. Uh, that's something maybe strange or different uh, because you would think you would always use uh, at least three. 
uh, maybe four wires, uh, a positive uh, voltage uh, power supply, uh, the ground and data, and then data plus or minus. So um, um, one of the patterns is that uh, the data is superimposed on the power voltage and uh, every LED has its own um, uh, ID. Uh, so we can determine uh, where it is within the display. One of the other really big advantages is the, the placement of the LEDs, because it's not uh, an, a conventional grid system. Eh? Uh, normally, you would uh, divide it into uh, rows and columns, uh, giving uh, moiré effects and things like this. Um, but this has a more organic or you could say random structure of uh, placing LEDs. And so uh, they're filling up uh, the gaps in between the rows and, and the columns. Uh, that gives also uh, a challenge for the rendering system uh, because the rendering system should know where every LED is. And uh, the render system I'm came up with for this display, uh, which we are going to talk about in a minute, um, is rendering in a, in a higher resolution than the actual LEDs. And so if you would split this up, technically, you could say, OK, it's, uh, it's consisting of um, uh, layers, uh, 40 layers, uh, 60 by 60 pixels. But in fact, we're rendering in 120, 120, and 80 layers. So virtual resolution is, is much, much higher. Uh, the site has a dedicated uh, uh, page for uh, our touch designer community. So here you can also download uh, the patch in order to uh, start creating content. You can watch tutorials, and, uh, uh, and they really also want to make advantage of the community as uh, so also building their own community around this display and and, and let's build together you know and, and that's something we did during um, uh, the first COVID lockdown uh, because uh, nobody was able to reach a physical dragon at that moment and and yeah we all like to produce uh, things for it so we came up with something uh, where we hooked up uh, a physical dragon uh, over the internet. Um, the physical dragon was placed in a warehouse in Madrid, uh, three cameras around it, so you could see it from every angle, because that's uh, one of the uh, major advantages of doing a real 3D volumetric display. Uh, if, if I look at displays, then uh, most displays are flat, uh, although it's 3D or volumetric like uh, looking glass at the moment, we're still looking at from one side and here you can just walk around it. Uh, so the example of the horse is, is really great. Uh, if I place the horse inside the volume uh, from one side, I can see its head. From the other side, I will see the back of the, of the horse. So it's also a completely different way of producing content. Uh, you have to take in account that everybody can see every angle. Uh, you could maybe um, see it more like a multiplayer a 3D game uh, where everybody has his own uh, point of view, uh, but then within a space. So we hooked up uh, this dragon uh, over the internet and gave uh, artists all over the world uh, the chance to produce content with the patch that I created. And uh, for most of them, uh, it was the first time. And uh, we had guys from Colombia, uh, Russia. So it was really uh, uh, one world combining. Uh, and, and also nice, because you, you can also see uh, cultural influences in the content that, that people are making. Uh, so from China, it would be uh, more or less a, a samurai guy who's doing things within that uh, volumetric display. So really, really cool. And all the artists got, um, uh, before we went live uh, on, on, uh, on Twitch, uh, they got a, a session of one hour where they uh, could test their content and adapt to this display. Uh, because 
of the lower resolution and uh, the fact that you can see it uh, in, in, in 360 degree, uh, you sometimes have to adapt your content to that display. So 10 different countries, one dragon placed in uh, Madrid. This was the physical setup. Uh, it was not three by three by two, but two by two by three. Uh, so a square uh, display, three cameras around it. Uh, yeah, some, some less neurons or voxels or pixels or whatever you want to call it. Dragon O, the, the product, uh, the stage paradox. Touch designer, uh, the software, and then uh, when every uh, content maker uh, was happy with this content, we all combined it in into one big patch uh, that was controlled over uh, the chat function in in Twitch, which is really powerful. So uh, live streaming from Madrid, uh, everybody all over the world was able to uh, determine what content they wanted to see on that moment. So every artist had his own number and uh, some uh, artists even made possibilities to change the content from the chat. Uh, so the color or the size, or uh, in, uh, there was one guy uh, who did something with the uh, human bodies. Uh, it was either sitting or standing or floating in, in, in this space. Program that I use for that touch designer. I think it's yeah, it's amazing. Uh, not only the community, but also the, the the guys and girls that are working for touch designer because they're so accessible. You know, uh, whenever there's a, a a workshop in Berlin, uh, Marcus will be there, and you can just approach these guys, tell them uh, what your uh, what you're dealing with, what you're working on, what the problems that you have, and they will always help you, always. So really great. And um, I'm not a hardcore programmer. I'm a technical designer with a love for, let's say, computers, and I can express myself uh, also. Um, yeah, I, I won't call myself an artist, but I can make some content really quickly uh, within this program. And, and the best part that uh, attracted me is that it's a really uh, official program. So on every note, you can immediately see uh, what is happening inside. Um, and uh, if I compare that with uh, V4, uh, also note-based programming, uh, I don't get it. You know, if I want to see what comes out, I uh, have to attach uh, another note in uh, to be able to see uh, what is happening and and. Uh, for me, that's the, the big advantage of Touch Designer. Uh, yeah, so not hardcore programming. I'm not using GLSL. I'm not using uh, any scripting, no, uh, no C++. I just used the standard notes and came up with a rendering system for a volumetric display that will do 60 frames per second. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, this is a glimpse of the, the rendering system. Um, in fact, it's really easy if you tear it down, the complete display into uh, multiple layers of uh, 2D screens, uh, uh, let's say transparent uh, LED screens uh, stacked behind each other. Uh, it's called stacked 2D. Uh, uh, so we render every layer uh, separately, giving the impression uh, that you're looking at a 3D model. Uh, so for a render engine, you need a geometry, uh, you need a light, you need a camera and, uh, and the, uh, the render uh, uh, node. Uh, uh, so most of those parts are uh, the same for every layer and you just have to slice it. That's it. So on the right hand side, uh, you can uh, see an example of that sphere that was inside uh, the dragon standing in our warehouse, where you can clearly see uh, the slices of the model. Uh, uh, that's um, uh, if you do that uh, within a 3D environment, uh, when you slice something, uh, the the object is hollow. But that can also be a good thing. Uh, for example, I can put two spheres inside of each other 
uh, normally you would not see them, uh, but now you can play with them uh, by giving them a different color. Uh, so if you have a, a red smaller sphere inside a white sphere that is bigger, you will see them both. So you can play around uh, with that. Uh, in my opinion, uh, this patch should be uh, open source and available uh, to everybody. Um, also because uh, when you make it open source, uh, uh, people from all around the world can uh, build on that and it will only get better. The, the advantage for the uh, producer of the LED display or, or any LED display uh, that you're going to use is then uh, that there will be more demand for hardware. Uh, there was also an, uh, a Kinect connected, so you could uh, do some interactive uh, stuff. Uh, this is an example of uh, the guy from Colombia, Fidioso, uh, who made content. Uh, here you can clearly see the three different angles uh, and, and the placement in, in the warehouse. A nice shot. Uh, another one. Uh, Oh, sorry, <laughs> that was too quick. Uh, you can see two women that was during um, a Halloween party in uh, Factory Berlin. Uh, and the right hand uh, was a big exhibition. And during the daytime, we used it as a 3D uh, clock that everybody uses or wants. But we can also uh, already do uh, things with textures. And uh, uh, this is the world spinning on uh, Berlinale. And uh, you can clearly see that it is the world. Uh, so uh, we're going over uh, Australia now, uh, India, and uh, in a few uh, moments you will see uh, South Africa clearly in, in full color. So amazing. Uh, I also built a visualizer for it. So uh, I can uh, produce content uh, uh, without having a physical uh, display uh, at hand. Uh, left was the, the visualizer and right was the, the real display. So it's pretty accurate. Uh, a, a final thoughts. Um, like I said, I would like to make it open source. Um, and, and one of the goals that we have with this display that we want to place it in a couple of uh, media uh, art museums around the world. An example could be NXT in Amsterdam and then uh, invite people, other people, uh, to create content. Th that could be artists, it could be also amateurs, or it could be a school where they see it as a product, project. Uh, when they uh, create their content within the patch, uh, send it in, uh, it will be uh, judged, and they will uh, get a mail back uh, with a time slot where they can see their content in a physical display in a museum near where they're living. And, and that would be really cool to open up a complete different uh, type of display environment to everybody. And how cool would it be if you can just take your friends and your family to a museum and say, oh, look, this is what I made. So yeah, that, there are a lot of thoughts, a lot of possibilities. Um, uh, uh, like Sarah also said, you can find me on. Uh, uh, stop sharing. You can find me on uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Always happy to help. Uh, not even within the touch designer community. If people have other questions, uh, uh, because of my experience, what I have seen and done uh, at Citizen Fi, you can always reach me. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we only have a couple of uh, mi t minutes for questions, so I'll try and get to these really quickly. From yeah. Omar Colom, we have, um, what other programs did you use before you decided to stay with Touch Designer? I think you mentioned one of them in your presentation. Yeah, uh, that's the, the Fujio uh, program uh, built by that uh, English artist, Alex May. And uh, check it out. It's also amazing, also the work that he's doing. Uh, he's also doing algorithmic photography, which is really cool, uh, where you can capture a photo over time uh, within with everything inside. So it's yeah, that that was inspiring. But nowadays, uh, yeah, only touch. 
not only for this display or uh, making content, but it's it's like a Swiss Army uh, tool. You know, you can use it for any application if if it's just. Uh, uh playback of uh, multiple videos triggered by some sensors or whatever it's yeah i think it's really cool and amazing so um i think we have another question available from gem design in texas can you speak of how you're monetizing your projects what are some of the obstacles you have faced when pitching pro projects like this to major brands i mean you're talking about open source so this this has got to be a, a critical part of how you're thinking. If it's not client driven, um, how do you support a project like this? Yeah, the, the what I did for this particular um, uh, display, the dragon, is uh, was completely uh, in my own interest. Uh, I don't have to make money out of it. I have a good job. Uh, I travel all around the world. Um, uh, we are lucky <laughs> that we have some. Uh, uh, bigger clients uh, who, who also have uh, some bigger uh, uh, budgets and also uh, have uh, uh, design departments that come up with the most amazing ideas that we have to translate into a technical uh, part. So, yeah, maybe maybe we're lucky uh, that I can do this uh, on the side uh, and not being bothered by uh, making money out of this. Excellent. And for Ash, example, the biggest. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have so many questions. I'm not going to be able to fit them into the next few minutes. <laughs> um, it's amazing work. I mean, it, it's always kind of been a dream of ours. Like, wouldn't it be great to make a volumetric screen? And we've, we've watched them come a long way. Um, various people have tried them in various different uh, types of uh, situations. I, I guess I'm the most, uh, the question that's uppermost in my mind is, you know, um, would you would you be interested in developing this to a bigger size for some kind of you know like a live stage show when they eventually do come back? Um, yeah, the, the, uh, that, that's how, the how nice. big do you think it can get? How, how much bigger can we get these things to be? Uh, uh, yeah, it's unlimited, I would say, uh, mm. because um, at this particular product, it's uh, it's just uh, based on tiles, fifty fifty tiles. Uh, the string is mm. three meters. Uh, but if I put, let's say, uh, a tile on top and a tile uh, underneath and, and connect the strings in the middle, I can come up with six meters height and just build mm. it within whatever volume I, I want to have. The only uh, uh, problem or a challenge that we have is uh, getting enough power, <laughs> computing power yeah. to render in in real time, you know. Yeah, that's easy. Uh, within touch, we just and, make and a network and sync them all together. Uh, the other thing that interested me is is the concept of like a live capture of a performer or or, or a viewer yeah. using like, yeah. a Kinect device. Have you done any sort of experimentation with that? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I'm I'm using uh, point clouds nowadays. Uh, where I can just transform somebody uh, that is standing in, in front of a Kinect into the display. Uh, uh, one Kinect is, of course, not enough to capture a whole person. So at least two, mm. maybe four, uh, to make it uh, nice. And I'm working now on a system where I can uh, transform that data over the internet. Uh, so point clouds <laughs> being sent over the internet by means of... Uh, assume or whatever is, is is not a question it's not possible at this time so working on a system where it is possible and then we can just have the computing power uh, next to the dragon and just uh, transform the data uh, from one side of the world to the other side and and that would open up a lot of possibilities uh, it, it's it's not like you have to wear a glasses to see somebody in augmented reality. Uh, no, I can uh, do my presentation here and uh, be on a stage in LA or wherever uh, within this 3D uh, volumetric display in real time. Working Fantastic. On something tells me you're going to get lots of emails from our audience here who, who are very yeah. intrigued by the idea that you did. They don't, they don't need to pay you to come and do a show for them. 
Well, um, I have to thank you to wrap up and get on to our next session. But uh, mm -hmm, Winfred, mm -hmm. it's wonderful having you be a part of Framework. And thank you for presenting. We really it enjoyed was a having pleasure. you here today. It was a pleasure. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you so much. <laughs> See you. All right. <laughs>